Is home distilling dangerous? Is it really something you want going on around your house? Don't people go blind or poison themselves drinking moonshine? Or even worse, blow themselves up? Okay, right now we're gonna have a look at the real story. Let's do it. Hey guys, I'm Jesse, welcome to Still It. This is the channel all about chasing the craft and making it legitimate. I'm going to be putting out a video every week, so if you're new to the craft and you want to get into it, think about subscribing. You can learn along with me. If you already know your stuff, you could probably help the rest of us out. And don't worry, I've got some really cool content just for you as well. Okay, so first up, moonshine is basically a term that describes any illegal distillate. Now, we don't do that around here, so we don't have to worry about that. If you want to learn more about moonshine, I'm going to be covering that soon in another video. Regardless, I think we can all agree that getting poisoned or going blind is kind of serious. Um, you know, as well as that death thing. To avoid those outcomes, you should probably learn, respect, and follow these six basic safety guides. Number one, using the proper materials. Remember that getting poisoned thing we talked about? Generally, that's due to shady people building shady stills out of shady materials and doing shady things. Don't be shady. But seriously, there's really only six things you want in contact with your high ABV alcohol or vapor. Copper, stainless steel, PTFE, lead-free solder, glass, wood. But what about... Nope. What if... Uh, no. It's not worth it, guys. Safety first. Using reclaimed materials is cool. In fact, in principle and in wallet, it's kind of a good idea. Just be sure you've got a decent idea what those things were used for. Number two, alcohol is a poison and it burns. I know we get a little bit desensitized to the stuff, but really, drinking too much of the stuff will kill you and it will burn. I'm talking about combustion, you know, not the funny sensation on your throat. Chances are you're going to be storing some pretty high ABV stuff, so make sure you label it properly and keep it secure. And obviously, if you have kids or pets around, yeah, I know, you know, got it. To make things even worse, the stuff burns with an invisible flame, so it's probably worth keeping that in mind while you're actually distilling. Especially if you're using a naked flame. You know what, honestly, you may want to think about using an electric build instead. Number three, pay attention while you're distilling. Leaving boiling liquid, alcohol vapor, and high ABV alcohol alone with a heat source is a bad idea. So make sure you're there and actually paying attention anytime your still is running. And yes, sorry, that means no drinking while you're distilling. Have a drink when you've earned it. Number four, respect vapor and pressure. Remember that whole blowing yourself up thing? Turns out the right mix of alcohol vapor and oxygen can be really, really explosive. So you want to make sure you don't leave any spills laying around. Also, remember that an alcohol-soaked rag is still giving off vapors just as much as a puddle of alcohol. Just to make things worse, imagine that really explosive alcohol vapor combined with a pressure building up. Turns out there's a pretty good reason for the golden rule of no closed systems. Always make sure there's an escape path for vapor and pressure. Also, make sure you don't put anything higher than 40% ABV into the boiler. We're making craft spirits, right? Not big ass fireworks. And one last thing, make sure you don't have any leaks in your vapor path. Number five. Know the rules first, before you start messing with them. We're pretty lucky that there's a whole lot of super knowledgeable people around in this hobby that are happy to give you advice. And trust me, it's going to be pretty hard to best the designs, plans, and processes that these people are recommending to you. Don't get me wrong, ingenuity and creative problem solving are a huge part of this hobby. But trying to reinvent the wheel before you've actually used one may not work so well. Try to stick to the known designs, materials, and practices. You actually can trust me on this one, guys. To all those out there that have helped me already, thank you, and I'm sorry. And finally, that whole going blind thing. We can probably thank Moonshine Myths and Legends for this persistent question. To be fair, there's actually a bit of truth in it. It has to do with a certain alcohol called methanol. So just don't confuse methanol and ethanol. Ethanol's the stuff we want, methanol's the nasty stuff. And geek points to anyone who can tell me which is the two carbon alcohol first. Methanol can actually cause some pretty nasty side effects in the human body, including blindness and death. Luckily, it's actually pretty easy to protect ourselves against it. Due to its volatility, it's the first chemical that comes off the still on any given run. 
So all you need to do is throw away the first bit of product that comes off your still on any given run. The amounts kind of vary depending on your specific situation, so we'll go into this in more depth at another time. So there you go, those are the basic safety principles of home distillation. It's kind of common sense, right? So learning these basic principles, respecting them and putting them into practice really does make home distilling really safe and a really fulfilling hobby. In saying that, this really is just an overview. So I'm going to start a whole playlist based entirely on safety. When you get a chance, you should probably go check that out as well. If you have something to add, make sure you comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This channel is going to be really viewer driven, so your comments really do matter. Thanks a bunch for watching the video and supporting the channel guys. If you want to keep supporting and keep still at running, the best things you can do right now is subscribe and watch the video soon after they're released. Lastly, I really want to thank the New Zealand Home Distiller Forum, the Home Distiller Forum and the Firewater subreddit for helping me out. You guys really have been awesome and I actually do appreciate it. That's it guys. See ya.